There are a number of other lifecycle methods with class-based components in React. However, most of them aren't used very often, or sometimes they're honestly kind of misused. So I won't be talking in depth about them, but we will touch on them in this lesson so that at least you will have heard of the lifecycle method. And I'm going to be providing links to the documentation in case you are interested in learning more. The first one we will touch on is called should component update. Notice that this is different than component did update, which we just learned about recently. And with this lifecycle method, you can tell React whether or not the given component, the component where you write this lifecycle method, should update when there are state or props changes. Now the truth is, I actually do go more in depth on should component update in this course, the React Bootcamp. But the main reason I do so is to then transition to understanding another topic called pure component. Assuming you're currently watching the React Bootcamp, then you'll be seeing that in an upcoming section. If you want a sneak peek, you can jump into the documentation. You can click the screenshot that I have here, and that will take you specifically to the should component update method in the React docs. But you'll notice in this third paragraph that it says this method only exists as a performance optimization and recommends that you should consider using the built-in pure component instead of writing your own should component update by hand. The next lifecycle method that we won't really be learning but I wanted to touch on is the get derived state from props static class method. Its purpose is to take incoming props and create state that you derive from those props in the component where you implement this lifecycle method. But as I've mentioned before, you probably don't need derived state. And I'm not the only one saying that. This is a blog from the React docs that you can read. If you click here, it will go a lot more in depth into why it is problematic to have derived state. There are rare cases where you might need this, so if you do feel interested in diving more deeply into it, you can click here, which will take you again to the documentation for it. And the last one that I wanted to list here was get snapshot before update. While React will remember certain things about your application between render cycles, for example, whatever you put into state, there are other aspects of the DOM that won't necessarily be remembered by React from one render to the next. And that's what get snapshot before update is used for. When a component is in the update phase before it renders, it will run your get snapshot before update function, which allows you to essentially save some kind of data. The example from the documentation is the scroll position in case the user has scrolled down the page. And then whatever data you save from get snapshot before update will actually be passed to your component did update lifecycle method as a third parameter. We saw how you can access the previous props and the previous state. A third optional parameter is the snapshot object or data that you save or might save if you use the get snapshot before update lifecycle method. Again, if you want to dive deeper, you can click on the documentation, but that's about all that I'm going to be talking about it. Okay, excellent work. I hope you've been able to follow along, do some of the challenges that I've given here. At this point, you should essentially be primed for taking the rest of this React Bootcamp course. Now that you know a little more about lifecycle methods, you should be able to have a smooth transition into the rest of this course.